Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Nikki Ringland, uh, and I'm the first lightning talk in the education mini-conf. Um, and I was just in a discussion that was great, and we were talking about uh, all of the problems involved in education and how, what we can do to fix them. So I threw together some slides, how can I help? What do I do? Give me some practical things that I can do to get involved. Um, this is me, hello. Um, so, okay, I'm going to run through a couple of programs that you can potentially get involved in that have direct impact on hundreds, well, tens, hundreds, uh, and tens of thousands of students. Um, so the first one is the NCSS Summer School, the National Computer Science Summer School. It's run at the University of Sydney. Every year we get in about 100 and, well, this year, 130 teenagers from across Australia and New Zealand and have 10 days of intense computer science. It is amazing and life-changing and fantastic. They learn about embedded systems, uh, using uh, microbits and, and all sorts of fantastic fun stuff, or they uh, collaborati bu collaboratively build uh, websites, social media sites, uh, and uh, <laughs> learn everything from git merge hell to uh, what does uh, a, a good UX design actually mean in the practical world. Um, it's heaps of fun, and also it's for teachers too. So in addition to the students, we also invite teachers, classroom teachers, primary and high school teachers, and they're embedded in with the students learning content uh, at the same time. They attend all the lectures, they work on the projects. Um, if you're looking at ways to support your teachers who you come into contact with every day, uh, who want more professional development, PD opportunities, send them along. It's heaps of fun. It is rather intense though. The cool thing about the summer school is that it's fantastic and really, really intense, but it doesn't scale well. Unfortunately, uh, we're quite packed in the labs. 130 students uh, really fill out every seat in the undergraduate labs. And it just, I can't fit a thousand students in there. And I can't fit 10,000 students in there as well. So the NCSS challenge is our online scalable solution to really try and bring engaging computer science education concepts to classrooms across Australia. So this runs every year. Uh, we had actually 11,000 students um, learn Python for five weeks. So this means learning problem solving. Uh, they're tasked with a, a problem. They have to work through it. Inevitably, they get stuck because learning to program is really hard. It, trust me, it really is. Um, and when they get stuck, they need to, someone that they can go to ask for help. This is where you come in. Here we go. Uh, we need a whole bunch of mentors who are happy to sit online for an hour, for 10 hours, the whole five weeks. It really doesn't matter any time that you have, and you can help a student work through their problem and say, oh, look, it's OK, you're just missing a bracket there, or I don't think you've actually read the problem correctly, or you haven't read the notes at all, um, which happens more frequently than I'd like to admit. Um, so if you're keen, if you like problem solving, if you like helping students learn, if you like helping kids get excited about something that excites you, Sign up as a mentor, 11,000 kids ask a lot of questions. Um, the Girls Programming Network um, is an initiative that I started up about 10 years ago. We run free workshops for primary and high school girls and get them excited about computer science concepts. So we've made uh, Markov chain text generation uh, programs. Actually, we started with little cups, it's great. Um, we build games in Pygame, we've taken apart computers and put them back together, all sorts of stuff that's really fun and engaging. But mostly the kids turn up, they, we fill the undergraduate labs um, here at the University of Sydney or uh, in various different uh, locations around Australia, fill the whichever space with girls who are really excited about learning this sort of stuff, which unfortunately isn't always the experience that, that girls get in computer science classes or computing classes at school. Um, and walking into a lab that's full of girls who are really excited about computing is a really powerful message um, for the students and, and for the tutors as well, also for me. Um, so we've got GPN nodes in Sydney, Canberra, Perth, Cairns, Rockhampton, soon to have one in Hobart, Catherine, Brisbane, and a town near you, dot, dot, dot. Um, the mentors have to be women, but you all can help support find a bit of pizza funding, um, that sort of stuff. Um, the GPN program has grown like, dramatically over the last 10 years. So it started off um, with me cold calling schools saying, 
we've got this program, it's free, do you have any students who'd like to attend? And really having to, to encourage students, beg them to attend, um, to now our workshops in Sydney, uh, that we fit 160 girls in the labs and they book out within a couple of hours. So there's a lot of demand for this uh, in every city and town that I've visited. Um, so if it's something that you might be interested in getting involved in, please contact us. Um, lastly, the Australian Computing Academy. So this is an initiative uh, of the University of Sydney. It's funded by the federal government. Our mission, uh, this is my day job, I support teachers in implementing the digital technologies curriculum. So hopefully that means uh, having teachers who are less stressed um, and actually who are confident in exploring and learning this content and, and knowing that they have both someone to go and ask if they've got questions and resources that they can use directly in the classroom. Um, so what we're looking for, for help from you, is actually just help getting the word out. I'm a computer scientist, I'm not a very good marketer, not very good at spreading the word and convincing teachers that this is really useful. Uh, we've got free resources for all students in year five and seven. All of our stuff is released Creative Commons. Um, and if you want to know more, uh, we're actually also going to be giving a talk about this, uh, Amanda and I, uh, tomorrow um, in one of the rooms, but I forget which one, so ask me about it later. So these are the links. This is, yes, this is the photo opportunity here. Uh, these are the ways that you can get involved. Um, there are heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of opportunities. In addition to this, you can go and volunteer at Code Club. You can become a mentor in FIRST Robotics. You can do all of these things. Some of them take a lot of time. Some of them take so little amount of time. It is so easy to jump online during the NCSS challenge, help three students close their brackets that are missing and be like, yeah, I really made a difference and actually have made a difference to that student learning computer science. Um, yes, come to our talk tomorrow. And if you're wandering around uh, the conference over the next few days, you can talk to any of these people who I've, I've circled, uh, except not the grass blade over there, um, who are all around in the hallways and stuff and ask them about how NCSS was, um, whether it's a good opportunity to get involved in, uh, and anything else you have, or ask me. More of them. Uh, here. Building seven. Building seven. Cool. Okay. Yep. Hi. Uh, my name's Mark, and uh, I'm just going to chat a little bit about um, a project that we're working on called Binary Crate, and perhaps uh, a bit informed about um, our previous discussion. Um, so our idea is um, we were doing some sort of after-school weekend learn to code sessions a couple of years ago and we had a lot of trouble actually setting people up when we were doing tutorials and when you go through something like the standard Python tutorial, the Django Girls tutorial, you've got to do a lot of setup and set up virtual ems and this kind of thing and it just takes a long time and people forget how to do it if they ever come back to it. Um, so our idea is, um, uh, okay, so sorry, um, the second problem they had is that they're text-based and we found that to be quite boring so we wanted to make it um, graphical, so uh, our idea was we were just going to make it graphical and see if we could get everything to run inside the browser so people just literally go to a web page and it sets everything up for them and they never have to come back. Um, uh, and our second thing we thought um, is that we were going to focus on helping public schools and teachers and students. Um, a lot of what we're sort of building is to try and keep the cost down and I know we've just had a discussion about uh, limited school budgets, so I'll just talk a little bit about how we're going to do that. Um, so basically we just try to reproduce the Python normal programming environment in the browser by using PyPyJS. So it'll just download the PyPyJS interpreter and all the bits of JavaScript it needs to work and start itself up automatically and it'll always just be set up for that. Um, we had to write our own UI libraries to make all of that work so that we have things like Python classes that um, make UI elements. And we have to write some data synchronization things so students don't have to write things like REST APIs and backend databases in order to make cool, fun, engaging applications. Um, so we've assumed we need to charge a very low amount. So the way we're doing this is we're running everything in the front end so we don't have to pay for server-side uh, computation and we just run programs on the computer that the student or the school has already paid for so we can hopefully make the thing really, really cheap. 
Um, and our data sync library as well helps us do that by meaning that we don't have to have much active involvement on the server side. And these two things put together mean a student can build a sort of engaging social app that they can share with their friends. Um, one of the things I thought about from our discussion was the whole thing about NAPLAN was sort of like punishing teachers and schools for having a negative result where one of the ideas we had was that we were going to try and record, um, reward people for having a positive result or have the students reward each other. They build something cool and show it off either to other students or maybe parents. Um, we know we also need to help teachers. So in a later stage, we're going to uh, build a way, we'll build the first generation of lessons, but of course, teachers want to customise their stuff. So um, we see ourselves as being a sort of more modern version of a textbook publisher. Um, and then hopefully we'll have a way that teachers can share their ideas with each other. Um, so this final page, it's a little bit of a demo to prove that we can sort of do the tech. So I built a little Pong game in an earlier version of the platform. Um, we had a government grant, so this was really to fulfill the requirements of the grant that the technology worked. Um, if you want, you can uh, go to that URL and play the Pong game. Um, and uh, we're going to make everything 100% free software and open source. Uh, we think this is what people are asking for. And one of the things that uh, Richard Stallman has said about why free software should be used in education is so that uh, you can actually look at a real program and see how it works. And this um, totally gels with my experience. I used to be a desktop programmer and I changed to the web and it was actually looking at full working websites that sort of made the penny drop so that I could understand how to build them myself. Um, so that's just a little bit about us. Any questions? Cool, all right, thanks. All righty. I think it's time to close. Or did we have someone else? I thought we might have an extra one. No? Okay. We're good. Okay. Well, that was the Education Mini Golf re rebooted. Thank you very much all. I found it very interesting. Um, I hope there'll be more submissions next year when we, uh, when we try to get it into the program. And of course, we do need to get it into the program first. There's some very nifty ideas about that. Um, so we can work on that. Um, you know, maybe we can spin this off and be as big as PyCon. Who knows? It is done. Most people are interested in education. We're just competing against a lot of other mini calls. That's the, that's the trick. In any, in any case, I think we've got a good thing going again. Um, so please do all fill in the, the contact details so we can stay in touch. Um, talk to me during the week, talk with each other during the week. And, and you know, being, you know I, I run a company, but I love exchanging ideas and getting more ideas. And, also sharing whatever I've learned with other people. I'm not trying to keep that secret. Um, that's not beneficial. You know? we, learn, we learn a lot from that. Thank you very much. Okay. Does that need to be, does that need to be on here or can we finish up? Okay. It doesn't need to be filmed. Oh, it can be, I don't care. So Open STEM is your company, right? And you, you just came here, volunteer, you volunteered to come here and share your uh, that's great. So I wanted to suggest if anyone's happy to come and take a photo with him because he's wearing the shirt so he can use it for their commercial purposes. That's what I was saying at the end. Can be edited off the video. I don't really I'm going to do that, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you so much. That was really great. Thank you. Really